the uh, delay. We had multiple uh, uh, difficult technical difficulties this evening. But anyways, we are here. We are live at the council chambers. Um, I noticed that Councillor Linton is not on screen. Uh, he's never responded. I don't know if he's re received any word from him or... Yeah, I can tell you that Councillor Linton sent uh, sent his regrets. Okay, okay, all right. Okay, so uh, staff, are you- The pretty isn't here either. Um, yeah, Councillor Pretty John's not there either. She might be recuperating, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, staff, are you, you okay to start? Yeah. You're all right? Yeah, you can- Okay. All right, uh, I'd like to call this meeting to order, Public Works Waste Management Committee of the whole meeting. Monday, October the 4th, 2021, six o'clock, which is now 621 uh, uh, virtual meeting. Please note, this meeting will be held virtually and available for public viewing on YouTube. As part of the public participation, if you have any questions regarding items on the agenda, Please submit them by email at mail at ektwp.ca. Questions received prior to the meeting will be addressed during public uh, question period, which is limited to a 15 minute time period. Can I have a mover to adopt the agenda, please? Moved by Councillor Node and seconded by Councillor Edie. All those in favor? Those carried, thank you. Number three, disclosure of interest. Does anyone have any disclosure of interest this evening on anything regarding to the agenda? Seeing none. Moving into the Waste Management Committee of the Whole uh, meeting. Uh, number four, adoption of the minutes. This is 4.1, Public Works Committee of the Whole meeting minutes, September the 7th, 2021. Can I have a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Renaud. Are there any questions, errors, or omissions with the set of minutes? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed and carried, thank you. Uh, staff reports, uh, 5.1, this is report WM21-02, that's e-waste disposal. Can I have a mover to receive this report? Moved by Mayor Burrow and seconded by Councillor Edie. Um, to our staff, uh, Director of Public Works, is there anything like to add to this uh, report? Um, the only thing that I would like to add is that uh, we are going to have to look at, at upgrading um, the door to that storage building. Uh, I, I can't recall if I could put that in this report or not. Um, and I'm uh, waiting to get some uh, uh, pricing on that. So, okay. Question, Councillor Renaud. Got two questions. I did not see batteries on this. I know it, it, it is and it isn't e waste, but batteries are a tough thing for people to get rid of and they should be recycling them. The other was why are we not just working with Real and Smith Falls and the Restore in Brockville? that take e-waste already? Why would we just not promote those two locations and they take them all week? I'll go to our director of public works and then over to Councillor Brayton. So, director? Yes, Councillor uh, Renault, to answer your first question, batteries are um, separate. They're not, they're, they're, they're not e-waste. That would be a whole other, whole other beast. Um, in regards to your second question, it was actually the the, pro, the province who directed this company to contact us as a um, depot. So they are just following the the direction of the province. Okay, you have follow up, uh, Councillor Renault. So we take batteries then. At the waste site? No. No. Okay. Not at this time. Uh, Alrighty. Thank you. Okay, Councillor Brayton? Yeah, I haven't had uh, 
on Highway 29 do not take electronic waste anymore for some time to have it. Probably spring. Did you hear that, Councilor Arno? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I've got, that's where okay. I've been taking mine is Brafo. I didn't realize they quit. Okay. Yep. Councilor Eady. I just want to say this. I think this is a really good idea. I mean, it's going to keep some waste out of our, our landfill too. So it's nice to give this other option to our residents. Okay. Um, Mayor Burrow, you want anything you want to add to this? Or? Uh, I I was just going to say that um, I know that the restore for a while wasn't taking it, but my impression was that they had just recently started up again. So I don't know whether that makes any difference to whether we do this or not. I'm just, I'm surprised if they are doing it, I'm surprised that the province directed the, the company to come and hook up with us like this. I just, what I don't want to do is see us make a move that then diminishes the restore's ability to generate a, a bit of a revenue stream. They've been a mainstay in our community. They do good work and, um, you know, if, if if we can support them, or at least if we can stay out of their way, um, I I would like us to make sure that we've done our due diligence to make sure that we're not that we either have to do this or that we're not interfering with them. Yeah, that's no that's my biggest concern. Thanks. Okay. Um, maybe one of you girls can. Can you provide a speaker Sure. Will speaker work with that? It's a lawful. Yeah. We, we can try that. Okay. Um, we're just going to add a speaker to this laptop so Councillor Brayton can, can hear a little bit more, uh, a little clearer. Well, you kind of just, I can't move my drawer when you're there talking. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, uh, I want to make a couple comments. Uh, I know that we talked about the electronic e-waste at a previous um, Public Works Waste Management Committee meeting. Uh, a few months ago, and I appreciate staff exploring the idea of providing this service to our residents. And as a report stated that uh, little expense to the township. And as the director of public works has stated about the, uh, the garage door, I did notice that the building was cleaned out on Saturday morning when I was there. Um, I know it's just the Greenbush um, waste site um, that we're discussing about having it. Um, was there any thought about the quasi hut building out in the Toledo Municipal Office area? Was there any thought of opening up there or just leaving it at the Greenbush Waste site? There was no. There, there was no consideration of use of utilizing another um, location. Okay. Uh, simply because it, it does, it would still need to be uh, um, run by staff. Okay. And um, that would be a difficult venture. Yeah, well, that's fine. Just, just ask, and I wasn't sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 go ahead. Just give me one second. Short oh. All right. Oh. Mayor Burrow or Councillor Renault, uh, can you guys speak just so we can make sure we got the volume loud enough? Yeah, is that For any sure. better? <laughs> it's still on there. Okay, just. I could invite my alter ego and start singing if you want. Oh, your laptop is not like my cookie. Oh, oh, we're still there. <laughs> Thank God we got your back. <laughs> you 
You want to test this there, Mayor Burrell? Sure. Is that any better? Can you guys hear us? Is that good? Sorry. Yep. We can turn it up for now. Uh, all right. Can you hear us? Try that. And so is that any better now? Yes, sir. That's good. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's not that I deaf. Deaf. I just couldn't hear you. <laughs> no, I uh, understand. Yeah. So, um, so regards to the report, uh, we'll just finish this report up. Sorry for the delay again. Um, the report is to receive, but uh, I think we need to, um, as a committee, uh, support uh, staff's initiative to proceed with the uh, collection of the electronic waste, e-waste, um, as a as a added level of service for our residents. Is that uh, fair to say for for everyone? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Opposed, carried, thank you. All right, now we're on to uh, 5.2. That is um, WM21-03 uh, report as waste site reconfiguration. Uh, can I have a mover and a seconder for this report? Uh, Councillor uh, Edie and seconded by Councillor Renaud. Um, to our Director of Public Works, is there anything you'd like to add to your report? No, I, there's nothing to do. Okay. I'll open up to the floor for any committee member, uh, Mayor Brant Burrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you to our director, I just want to make sure that I have the concept right because I see the location of the, the new sawtooth wall. So is the concept to relocate the existing bins or are, is this going to be a completely new set of bins and any insight that you can provide around the logistics, I would find a little bit helpful. Yeah, so the the uh, the concept is is to add a, a secondary disposal uh, location just for household waste. It might not be bins. It might not. It might be something else. Um, but what is, I guess, sort, sort, sort of a sure thing is the location of this new, um, of the new bins or whatever we decide to use to transport that household waste from that location up to the landfill. But the existing bins will stay in place. And that and and those bins will be solely used for uh, recyclable uh, material. Okay, so a follow up, if I may, Mr. Chair. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so I realize that what I'm about to say is going to sort of take this whole conversation in a, in a completely different direction, but this seems as good a time as any to segue into into this. If we're going to undertake a any major new initiative uh, regarding the processing of, of household uh, waste. Uh, and, I, and I don't disagree with the scales and, and that part of this concept by any means, but I personally am a little bit reluctant to undertake any major changes to the processing of the household waste because I continue to get a lot of feedback from residents that they would like us to examine uh, household pickup. And so I would hate to see us spend money on this new initiative if ultimately we continue to get pressure and we go with a household pickup throughout the, the whole township. And I've made it clear that I don't want to ram that down people's throats, but, but I would like to at least be able to respond to their requests with full information so that they know how much it's going to cost and, and they understand you know, all of the, the logistics. So I'm certainly open-minded to this, prepared to listen to the rest of the conversation, but I just felt compelled to toss that out there because I'm just a little bit leery to stick my foot on the gas on this in case we end up having another conversation at some point. Thanks. Okay. Any other committee members? Uh, Councilor Renault? A question. So if I am a person and I came in with a dump trailer, full of household garbage or twine or bale wrap and I want to dump that 
not put it into a bin is that I go over the scales, I pay whatever it says to pay, and then I can just dump it because it's on a dump trailer. And is there a different price if I'm me, an individual, or if I am a small business in the township with similar household garbage? Director. The intention would, would be that we would uh, still not allow residential waste to be dumped on directly at the top of the, of the landfill cell. They, that, uh, they would still have to dump household waste uh, in some sort of uh, bin. Let's, let, let's just say bins. Um, the other the other intention would be that there would be one flat rate for uh, whatever material you are bringing in. So of the two types of material that we currently uh, seek revenue from, that's household waste and that is construction waste. Um, the intention, and this is a similar approach to what, what other municipalities do, there is one rate for whatever you bring in. Okay, Councilor Renaud, you got a follow-up or? Uh, well, so in other words, it has to be in a bag. I have to be able to pick that bag up and put it into a bin because if I just brought a dump trailer full of kind of sort of loose stuff, that ain't gonna work. No, you dump it. No, in this, in this uh, circumstance, you would be able to bring it in loose and you would go over the scale, you would get weighed in, you would dump your material, then you get weighed out and then you would pay based on weight. So uh, material does not necessarily have to be in bags, no. But it, okay, you've said it different twice. You, you, so you said if it's household waste, so if I had a dump trailer full of, okay, say, say Bellamy Park came in with a trailer load of, and that would be similar to household waste. A lot of it would be waste from the trailers. That's what it would be. And it would be all these different bags in, in a dump trailer, but they would have to, to take each bag out and put it in a bin because it's household waste. But if I came with a load of veil wrap, I can just dump it. So I'm, I'm just trying to get that clear in my head. Yeah, it doesn't matter as, as long as it falls under the category of household waste, it would not have to be bagged. It, it would be, it um, can be loose because it's all based on weight. It's not based on how many bags and how many bag tags or how many um, load of tickets that you have. It's all based on weight. But you said you didn't want household waste dumped at the back. Correct. So if it's in a dump trailer, how am I going to get it in the bins? Well, in that case, you may have to just offload it, offload your load by hand. Okay, not convenient. What happens now? That, okay. that, that happens now all the time. Okay. okay. Councillor Edie, and then Councillor Bate. So I'm going to just follow behind uh, Councillor Renault for a second because I'm a little confused. So if somebody has a trailer full of garbage, but they're in garbage bags, then they're not allowed to use the scales? <laughs> no, you... <laughs> No, you would definitely still use the um, um, scales because. Okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> forward, we would no longer have have bag tags or um, scale tickets or low tickets. So it's so everything is based on weight. So every single vehicle gets weighed. Every single vehicle that is coming into the site to to dispose of. Household waste or construction waste, uh, 
I mean, even yard, yard waste, not that we charge for yard waste, but I would still like those weights so we know how much is coming in. But everything, yes, every vehicle that is bringing in material that's going to end up in the landfill would get weighed in and get weighed out. Okay, Councillor Eady. I, I, I think I'm okay. So I'm just, I'm still a little confused. So, okay, so now we have a car driving in. They've got two bags of garbage in their trunk. So you're weighing that car. That's correct. Okay, I'm on the same boat. Okay, Councillor Brayton. Thank you, Chair. Number one, first of all, we don't have scales. And number two, there was counselors on the committee all the time that we configurated that bins the way we did and dumped the cars up at the front was to keep the public from going back to the back end. That was the purpose of it. Uh, like there's still no scales there and there, there's not going to be for some time to start with. So of the, the councils of the past didn't think that they needed scales that would, for the cost of them and it was what, what it was doing. And as far as I'm concerned, and uh, I think we all should be kind of thinking of the same thing that we have a service here and we have a place to, to uh, dump our physical garbage or construction garbage. And that was a whole whole gist of the of the thing is I seems to me that everybody thinks that we should be making a whole bunch of money at every, everything we do. Uh, to, to me, we sell a service. We don't sell we don't sell a, the same as the public does. And we don't pay uh, dividends of any money we, we make or whatever. So like I think they were, were kind of getting stretched out here a little further than re we're reaching a little further than we should be reaching because we don't have some of this stuff yet. And I'm sure that if they want it, we'll have it. But as of yet, we don't have it. And I think we should be looking after what we do have and we should be maintaining our roads that we do have instead of uh, having to go down and say, you're gonna wait till next year because I got this other thing to do. So like, we have got a, this council and our staff, we've got to work together and get this, try to get it right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay. If I have any more, I'll think of it and I'll tell you. Okay, Mayor Burrow. Almost forgot to unmute there. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, in, in the report, it talks about, uh, it ties in with a previous report that we dealt with at the, at the council table regarding grants. Um, and so I think the concept here is to, uh, to apply for a grant uh, to get the scales. And I see that staff has done the analysis on the amount of uh, revenue that we seem to be losing with our current system on how we are charging or not charging properly for the construction and demolition waste. So it, it seems to me that if we're wanting to put money into roads, one of the ways that we can do that is to stop losing money on the operation of our waste site. Uh, this is just purely from memory, but I think we're around somewhere in the 65 to $85,000 a year mark uh, on, the, on the total waste site operation uh, in terms of a deficit. So if we can help to reduce that deficit, if we can, make another 25,000 that we should be making all along anyway on the construction and demolition waste, then that's another 25,000 that doesn't have to come off the tax bill and can go into the into a road instead. So I see the rationale behind it. I think staff has done a pretty good job of doing the analysis. Um, as I say, I just, just wanna be convinced that this is not at cross purposes with what uh, people have been asking for in terms of the um, the pickup at the at the end of the driveway and we may go through you know if we decide to go through that exercise and ultimately they say oh no that's way too expensive we didn't realize what that entailed no we don't want it after all then fair enough you know this is still still waiting for us um, 
or you know through to the director maybe this is not an either or maybe they can work in concert i just i don't know whether you'd given any consideration to that thanks okay to our director of public works so yes uh mr mayor in in regards to the concept of providing curbside pickup for the entire town town uh, ship no it hadn't been thought, thought thought of as part of this um uh, this concept how however i do remind you that we the province is currently uh trying to roll out the new blue box uh pro program which does that, that will provide recycling curbside uh, pickup for all residents um if we want to um uh, proceed with having the south end of the town, the township for uh, garbage collection, I would suggest that waiting until that process has rolled out might make sense. Um, the second point I would like to make is that regardless of, of whether or not uh, curbside uh, pickup for garbage is put into place for all residents, Having the scales in place still does not change, or that having these the scales at the landfill does does not change that change anything because those trucks who are collecting those garbage or that garbage still have to go over the um, scales to be weighed in and then dumped. So we're still weighing that waste uh, the same way that we would be if we had the scales now and uh, Limerick was bringing loads of waste into the site, we would still have them weigh in and weigh up. Okay, thank you. That's that's really all I wanted to hear was that it, the one concept does not conflict with the other. Um, even if we are forced to continue to wait or what have you, that's fine. I can be content with that. Just didn't want to be, I'd like to get behind this, but I was reluctant to get behind this until I knew that the two things were not coupled together. So thank you for that. Okay. Councilor Brayton. Yeah, we've we've gone over this and over and over and over more than once to pick up waste in the sale van. There is pickup in the sale van right now if you want to pay for it. The people found out that the township, if we were to pick it up at the end of their driveway, they're going to have to pay for it too. So if they want to pay for it, they can pay and get it done right now. That's been gone over and over and over and over again. And we and the, the we it came that the people that were making the complaints when they found out it was going to cost the money. And they could get it now, they got it now, and they were quite satisfied that we're bringing this up. The public aren't bringing it up, we're bringing it up, and I don't think it's proper to do that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, anyone else? Um, I just wanted to make some, some of my own views of the report. Um, similar to what Mayor Burrow stated, looking at the um, I'll call the logistics of driving through the new road and where the existing bins were, if the existing bins were going to stay where they are. I just find um, this new concept might not be as user friendly. I agree with having scales for the uh, construction demolition uh, waste. Um, I do believe we are we are losing money in regards to that, and we're filling the uh, waste site up not as fast as we used to, but we're still filling them. And uh, Councillor Brayton is not wrong um, with regards to the scales. Uh, previous uh, public works directors, um, there was reports on scales, and I know our director of public works has uh, contacted them. Um, some other suppliers and to find out what the cost of scales are. Um, I, I don't dispute uh, not having scales. I think scales will be uh, an excellent uh, added value for the waste site. 
especially like I said, with weight with the uh, construction and demolition waste. Um, people pulling into the waste site presently, they uh, you know they they like the sawtooth uh, um, system that we have, where they can back up and drop their rec their recycles in the recycle bins and their bag of waste into the waste bin and then drive on. Um, so I'm just not sure how how the new configuration would work. And I know we're just receiving this report. And I just want to say that, you know, uh, if we were moving, if we were to move on um, with using some monetization um, program funding, uh, I would suggest we go with an RFP and get the full cost of everything before we go that route, just so we know what the, the uh, cost would be for the, the scales. So there's just my comments. Councilor Renaud? It just hit me. If I'm not putting a sticker on my bag of garbage that I have bought prior and you're weighing me and I'm paying a price, I don't know that weight till I get there. So I'm going to have to pay you when I get there. And we've all always said that's not possible. So I'm just throwing that out there. Somebody better think of that one. You're, you're correct, uh, Councilor Renaud. That's what would have to take place. It would have to be someone manning a booth uh, with a debit, credit, uh, you know, machine and everything else, just like you would at, at BFI or Waste Management in Brockville. That's the same thing. So, uh, Councillor Pretty John. You're muted, uh, Councillor Pretty John. I'm here. I couldn't get on with my laptop, so I'm doing it on my phone. And I apologize for being late. One, I forgot, and two, I don't feel that great, but here I am. Um, <clears throat> and listening to this, I know the waste management in Brockville, and it, it started when COVID started. They no longer accept cash. They only accept debit and credit, I think. So, you know, we wouldn't have to handle cash if we went that route, because most people that are going now to the waste site, a lot of them from the south end, um, are used to not paying in cash. So that's another option. We just have debit or credit and make sure we advertise that well in advance. And that way there's no worry about counting money, et cetera. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Brayton. Yeah, I just want to say that we, uh, that we would need somebody to man this. So instead of having two employees there, we have to have three. Uh, and you, you talk about uh, saving $50,000, well, maybe that person third person would cost more than the $50,000. So like maybe it might not be such a win-win situation after all. Okay, thank you. Councilor Renaud. Yeah, um, I'm, not a, I'm not against the scales. I'm definitely not against making changes at the landfill, but I think we need a full costing. And Councilor Pretty John made a, a, a statement there about having to use debit or credit or whatever. There's a cost to that. So that needs to be put in here as well for us to look at. We need to know what that cost would be. And it's not cheap, but it's something that would need to be looked at so that we have all of the costs of, of changing the way we do business. Um, especially if you're going to be having people that come in with one or two bags of garbage having to do this. So it's everybody has to pay at the landfill, not prior. Anyhow, it's just a thought. I'd like to know the full cost. Okay, thank you. Mayor Burrell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, an interesting aspect that I just thought of with regards to getting rid of the tags and, and having to weigh every car. Um, right now, uh, we expect two employees, and when it gets there on, on a busy on a Saturday, I mean, we've all been there at one time or another. We know how crazy it can get. Uh, you know, right, right now, we expect them to make sure that there's a tag on every bag, technically. Um, and when it gets really busy, that's not necessarily practical when you've got all kinds of things going on at all kinds of bins. And so this eliminates the, the risk or the, or the threat from their point of view that if we do a surprise audit on, on one of the bins and we pull a bunch of bags out and they don't have tags, well, they catch it in the neck for that. And, and this whole system will just eliminate that because it doesn't matter what you're, you're dumping, you're going to pay for it. Uh, so I think in fairness to, to our employees, we need to be thinking about that aspect of it as well. Thanks. Councillor Pretty John. 
Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. One thing, um, because we have frequented the waste management in Brockville a few times, they don't charge for going in and putting in your recycling and they don't charge for the e-waste and by the e-waste is a bin and they do charge. And I think now it's 325 a bag. You throw it in there and that takes care of the people that just have one, two, three bags because they have a minimum load. I'm not quite sure what it is now, but when you took a half ton in, it was like $15. And if you only had $10 worth, too bad they got a tip. So um, I like that system where if I wanted to drive in, I could throw in my bag or my two bags with my sticker on it, or we could eliminate the stickers and still pay, because that's what they do at Wayside. They pay for their bags. You throw them in, you get rid of your recycling and you leave. If you come in with a, a big load that you're gonna have it weighed, you drive way to the back and then you just put it out there. So, I mean, if we're gonna do it on, on that kind of a scale, maybe we should not reinvent the wheel and just copy what they've done on, on a smaller scale. I think it would work. And then I think they take something and they load that on a forklift and they take it back and they dump out those bags and you start again the next day. So something to look at. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Brayton. Yeah, what did you say they, they charge for a bag, Councillor Brayton? Okay, just trying to get back here. Um, I'm back. Um, I think it's 325 now. It started at a bag and like they're not, they're not weighing it. So like a normal size garbage bag, it's 325. Some people go for the convenience. Um, that would far outweigh going out to the landfill if you only had a bag of garbage and having to then go and weigh it and then they say okay well your bag's going to be 342 or whatever um the rate may be i'm just saying if we went along the same kind of guidelines then maybe we don't have to reinvent what we're doing thanks we'll follow up follow up yeah i would thank you councillor pretty john uh, mm -hmm. I was just thinking that if we if we put the charge a uh, dollar ninety five more per bag, we charge a dollar thirty. They charge three twenty five. That's uh, two dollars and five cents more. Maybe 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 our uh, way site would balance out and and make up that deficit of. $50,000 or whatever you said it was. $2 a bag is quite a lot of money. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all, right. all I got to say. Thank you. All right. So anyways, this report, I don't see more hands up. And um, good discussion. This report is just to be received. So all those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, number six, financial to date. 6.1 Waste Management Financial Statement dated September 28, 2021. Can I have a mover and a seconder for their financial statement? Uh, Mayor Burrow and second by Councillor Eady. Any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor? Opposed, carried. Thank you. Uh, number seven, informational items uh, under waste. Does anyone have anything to mention regards to waste? No one? All right, public question period. Were there any questions submitted in regards to waste? There were no questions. No questions this evening. Thank you. We're now into public works community of the whole. Number nine, staff reports. This is report number PW21-29. That's 2021 OSIM reporting. And I have a mover and a seconder for this report. Moved by Councillor Pretty John, seconded by Mayor Burrow. Um, Director, do you have anything you want to add to your report for the bridge inspection? Uh, no, I don't. Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions from any member of the committee? Mayor Burrell? 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first is a comment, uh, as I find the source of my question. The, the comment is, uh, I've always liked the idea of having some projects that are uh, shovel ready, uh, sitting on the shelf, so that then when grant opportunities do come along, we can take advantage of them. I know uh, in years past, we've the township has found itself in a position where had it had a project ready, it could have applied, but because it didn't, you know, opportunities uh, came and, and went. Uh, so I'm, I'm glad to see that we're trying to get ahead of the wave again. Um, my question is with regards to the uh, Jellyby Road culvert. So I'm looking at page, well, primarily page 48 of our uh, agenda package. So it talks about uh, replacing the approach barrier with a code compliant barrier system. So I'm assuming that this is, uh, you know, basically the guardrail or, or um, uh, guard cable, whatever you want to uh, call it, uh, so that it, it's, uh, you know, uh, a crush, crush zone or some kind of deflection zone. So I'm, I'm just a little bit surprised. I didn't think that the codes had changed that much since the uh, Jellyby Road project had been completed. So I'm just surprised that what was put there was not code compliant, or maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they have changed more than I realized. So just some further comment around that. I would certainly welcome. Thanks. Director. So the only thing I can say about that, Mr. Mayor, is that uh, this is why we hire engineers and experts to uh, look at these structures and, and these sites. Uh, I'm with you. I have no idea when or, or if the standard has changed. I can only assume that, th that they have. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Um, so, uh, the report is to be received. I just want to point out something and I want some clarification that um, the last paragraph going forward is crucial for the township to invest appropriately in its bridge structures. This means obtaining the services of qualified professional engineering firms to perform the required investigations and in engineering as identified in this report with a focus on EK1 and EK8. EK1 is line one bridge. EK8 is Fly Creek Road culvert. As is felt, these are the two most critical projects. So director, is there anything you want to add or just receive this report? No, I think the only thing I would, I guess, add with that is that, uh, uh, this will be reflected in the coming budget. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. All those in favor of this report? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, 9.2, that's report PW21-30. That's September project update. Can I have a mover and a seconder for this report? Councillor Brayton, seconded by Councillor Renaud. Uh, anything you want to add to your report, Director? Sure, I do. Um, yes, the extension of Rosen Road has, in fact, uh, start, started. Uh, Tackerberry was on site uh, today, starting the replacement of the culverts. Um, the service tree treatment is essentially complete. There is still going to be a little bit of uh, sweeping and uh, such to be complete completed on House Road and um, Graham Lake Road. Um, Lynn Valley Road Bridge, I've gotten um, preliminary uh, reports from the end, the engineer that do suggest that this structure uh, may be in a lot worse shape than we first thought, and there could be a need to load rate that structure and fast track either the replacement or, well, I'll be honest, likely replacement of that structure more information to, to come when the engineer has complete, completed their, their report. 
Uh, New Dublin Road uh, flood, uh, as most of you can probably have seen, it is 99% complete. I want to say I was very pleased with my crew. They did, they did an amazing job uh, to complete that work in basically four, four, four days. Um, job well done. Um, the cover, the, the fabric cover storage build, building, the uh, walls, wall forms are going up or have been started to today with uh, pouring of the walls uh, tomorrow. And I do have word from the contract tractor right about developments that the, the building structure has arrived. So we might be ahead of schedule, which is good. Might be, that's a big might. <laughs> Thanks oh. for the clarification. <laughs> Never hold your breath on that. Um, anyone have a question? Um, uh, Councilor Brayton? Yeah, uh, to the director, through you to the director, it only works. <laughs> Charles, I was down to Jurassic Road today, and uh, <clears throat> they were just putting in that cover. Uh, one of the lads, he was wearing a white hat, and he said, I, I couldn't understand. He said, replacing a culvert uh, that is, uh, I don't think the vehicles ever went over. So why were they replacing the culvert? Because the two two reasons uh, th those culverts did see a substantial amount of uh, water, it's not the load of the of the vehicles or the traffic that really affect those pipes. It's the actual exposure. Yeah. Uh, plus, when you invest in a road like like that, you build the base and you pay you pave it. Um, more times than not, you will replace. The culverts that are underneath that that road. That is a proper process. Yeah, well, uh, that thank you. I, I was just wondering. Uh, I didn't realize that there was a culvert there, and, and I couldn't really give him an answer. And he was quite inquisitive there, but I I didn't know. If I give him an answer, I wouldn't know what I was talking about. The next time you tell him to come and talk talk to me, okay? Well, I will do that, but it was just a. I was there and he yep. that. Yep. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mayor Burrell. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you, just a quick follow up with our director regarding the, um, uh, the surface treatment. Um, as luck would have it, I, I happened to travel along Halix Road West. Uh, what day is today? Monday. So yesterday. Uh, in, and it didn't look to me like the surface treatment had been done there. So did that happen today or or maybe maybe some wires have got crossed somewhere, but it, it, I could still see the orange paint and so on. It didn't look like there had been a change in the surface. Yes, it was done to, to, to today, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, fair enough. Sometimes the simplest explanation is the, the right one. Thank you. Yeah, Councillor Eady. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I drove down New Dublin Road today and I thank you for the beautiful work and my car thanks you too. Okay. Anyone else? Seeing none. All those in favor of receiving this report? Opposed and carried. Thank you. Uh, 9.3 uh, Rehabilitation of Halex Road South. That's report number PW21-31. I have a mover and a seconder for this report. Moved by Councillor Pretty John, seconded by Councillor Eady. Uh, Director, do you have anything you want to add to this report? No, I do, I do not. Okay, thank you. Um, does any member of the committee have anything they wish to speak on? Uh, Mayor Burrell? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I have a number of concerns with regards to the uh, to the project. Um, nothing wrong with the report. I think it's an excellent report, by the way. Um, but I, I've just finished sending sending an email off. There's going to be a stakeholder meeting tomorrow, which unfortunately I can't attend. 
uh, have a, a previous conflict, but um, I've certainly expressed some concerns here. Some of the obvious ones, of course, uh, involve the the detour for our, our fire services, but it, it gets more and more complicated the, the deeper you think about this. Um, when you combine this closure with the prospect that we know at least once every season, there's a major incident on the 401 that causes a closure. So this detour is already forcing traffic down onto County Road 2. The 401 forces traffic onto County Road uh, uh, 2. Halix Road West is going to see uh, an impact to this. Uh, I just, I have real, real concerns. So I, as you know, I've already been in touch with our MPP. Um, he's concerned about this as well. I've had conversations with him. He's well aware of, of uh, what the issues are. Uh, so essentially the email that I sent off today in preparation for the stakeholder meeting tomorrow is to again, ask them to please reconsider the weight of the local impacts uh, and to take a second look at building a new structure adjacent to the existing one so that the actual closure is minimal when they just realign the, the road. I know that there are additional costs that may involve delays on, on their part as well. Uh, so I didn't make that request lightly, but I just wanted to keep the committee informed that I continue to try and advocate for that because overall, I think it is uh, the best and, and most appropriate uh, approach. One thing that comes out of this meeting, I think either we need to rec make a recommendation to council or to uh, our fellow uh, committee of the whole, our fire committee of the whole. Um, I'm really concerned about the, the impact of the response to the residents south uh, of the closure. And one option may be that as we have a fire agreement for uh, one quadrant, actually where I live in the township, where Brockville is the first responder and we take over, it's the Laurier station that responds. We may want to consider entering into an agreement for the length of the project if, in fact, they go with the full closure the way they're looking at it now. Enter into an agreement with Brockville where they're the first responder from their station one until we can get there and take over the scene. So very similar to what we already do for other geographic areas of the township. But the response time from Brockville would be eight minutes compared to our current six minutes versus our response time is going to go from six minutes to 11 and a half minutes with the full closure detour. So I'm I'm just putting that on the radar that I think there's a conversation or a discussion for council to have, or maybe the fire committee to, to have, but um, there are lots of things to consider as we get very close to the starting line on this. Thanks. Okay. Anyone else? Um, don't see any hands go up. Um, I will say it is a good report. I appreciate that the uh, new overpass uh, will be wide enough to accommodate uh, pedestrian traffic and that the, um, the uh, consultant MTO uh, is including the rehabilitation of the rest of Halleck's Road South under the scope of uh, work for the overpass project and that MTO uh, felt this is, uh, could be favorable uh, because it results in a better unit pricing uh, for per product, um, and uh, I appreciate and and like the idea that um, the MTO, uh, the managing of the project, will be MTO underneath their umbrella uh, with regular consultation with the township. Um, further down in the report, um, that uh, Macintosh Perry, who is a consulting uh, firm. Uh, confirm that MTO would be in favorable of this uh, as a long as the township accepting their approach of rehabilitating the road and uh, MTO looking at performing full depth repair to specific areas uh, with the asphalt overlay and also undertake the geographic ge geotechnical investigation at no expense to the township. That's also another huge savings for us uh, as it states, as far as culvert replacement, ditching, guardrail, uh, et cetera, that would be onto the township. And, you know, yeah, that kind of work, in my opinion, should be done before uh, the road is completed, um, just to keep that in our radar. Um, and I think the other thing with this new overpass, having a pedestrian um, accommodated for pedestrian traffic. If we're doing so much work on Halleck's Road South, perhaps we should have 
uh, one side as a pedestrian walk. Very similar to in the village of Lynn, if you're on County Road 46 slash Purse Street in the village of Lynn, you'll notice a white line. And that's, that's the walking line for pedestrians as there's no really official sidewalk, but it's a, it's a lane where people can walk. And uh, I appreciate, uh, you know, uh, McIntosh Berry and MTO looking at putting a, a pedestrian uh, traffic uh, through there. Um, Mayor Burrell, you mentioned that uh, the Alex Road. So I, I did recall, I did receive a call um, yesterday um, that this this report was was handed out to the residents. Um, did they did they have any questions regards to this report? Uh, concerns regards to this project that uh, you want to share with us that was given back to you or the the main conversation was just a, an fyi uh, it was to let them know that our conversations were starting in a much deeper way than they had done i mean we've been aware of this for some time but this now is is the most detail that we've had uh, to date uh, so i just wanted them to be aware uh, and to make it their responsibility to monitor our agendas you know i told them here's the ball you run with it or don't as you see fit the biggest feedback that I got was, um, and they acknowledged that, yes, they'd received packages from Macintosh Perry, and it was probably in there, but I guess they didn't really get the one and a half year closure because they were saying, oh yeah, when are they starting on that? And so we're going to have those traffic lights and it, no, no, you won't have traffic lights. They're talking about a full closure and really, well, how long is that going to be? Well, they're looking at one and a half years, really. And so, you know, those that was probably the number one thing that came out of it. Most people were just appreciative to get it on their radar and they said they would start to follow the agendas now and so on. And they appreciated the fact that uh, the committee and, and council was gonna continue to, to talk about this and try and do the best they could for the residents. So I think the number one thing was just the, the length of the of the full closure. That was, uh, that was a shock for a lot of people. Yeah, it, it probably is a shock to a lot of people uh, unless they've been involved in one. <laughs> um, but I must say that it wouldn't matter if it's Macintosh Perry or, or um, Jewel Engineering or Richards uh, and Associates. Um, I was not involved directly with uh, the project in Kingston, but uh, yeah, it's, there's always going to be hiccups and bumps and road closures and everything. But um, picturing in my own mind, I'm not sure how how we could leave the existing uh, overpass in place and trying to construct a new one and having it aligned with the north and the south uh, of uh, Hallux Road. Um, so, uh, and I'm glad to hear that uh, there are other meetings taking place with uh, MacDosh Berry and MTO and, and stakeholders. Uh, hopefully we get some more information from them. Um, and, and something else that, that uh, I like to say is that hopefully they're involving the, uh, the school transportation as well uh, because of the, the closure. Um, it's not just uh, our uh, fire emergency service vehicles. And it is also the school board. And, um, and, and I know these, these engineering firms work with all these stakeholders and all their big projects when there's a closure. And you're, you're correct. Uh, I think during the next fire services meeting that we have regards to, I'll call it the mutual aid uh, with Brockville coming over and servicing some of the uh, the Western area, uh, which for our township and vice versa, front of young could probably come over and service some of our area as well uh, with regards to uh, calls, emergency calls. So I look forward to hearing more uh, about this project from MTO and, and Macintosh Perry. And I'm sure everyone would be happy when it starts and happy when it's finished. But it's a, it's a long, long process, but I think we'll get over it. Um, if I can just respond anything? to one thing that you said, uh, yep. Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, with regards to the, the alternate approach of, of building a new structure beside and then realigning the road, um, I don't know all the details, but I do know that there were four options when this first uh, hit the MTO disc. There were four, four options that were considered. Um, early on, two were eliminated and it came down to the two finalist approaches. The two finalist approaches are the one that they're currently looking at, basically full closure, 
uh, demolish what's there and rebuild in the existing alignment. The other option that only uh, lost out at the very last stage was to build adjacent and to put a, a soft S bend in at the bottom of the uh, both sides of the um, the bridge. So apparently the the concept had been developed, and yes, it would involve uh, some purchase of, of land and a little bit more environmental impact and and some costs. But apparently the uh, the approach had been worked out, so it, it is a viable option. It's just a case of whether they're willing to to take it on once they have another look at all of the impacts that I've outlined. Uh, ready for tomorrow's meeting. Thanks. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, director. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on the uh, pedestrian traffic um, idea uh, and about having the uh, single uh, walking lane on the one side. That that is one uh, idea that we that I have already did, discussed with MT or with Macintosh uh, Perry. And it's possible, uh, but we have to be careful uh, how far we want to take take that because if we do want full pedestrian access or pedestrian um, usage, I guess uh, it could mean a drastic change in the scope of work, which would fall outside of the MTO scope of work. Um, the second thing I want to just seeking clarity here, uh, the, the the purpose behind this 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 report was to see if commit com, committee did have interest in potentially pursuing this with MTO. So I'm just looking for that. Okay. Uh, anyone comment? I think we got the nods uh, to go ahead with uh, MTO with this project. Any negatives? No. Nope. All positives? All those in favor of that? We got the green light. Okay. All right. All those in favor of this report? Opposed? Carry. Thank you. Uh, number 10, financial to date. That's Public Works financial statement dated September 28, 2021. Can I have a mover and a seconder for their report? Financials. Uh, Councillor Pretty John. Councillor Eady. Any questions? Seeing none. All those in favor? Opposed, carried. Uh, number 11, correspondence. That's 11.1. That's T. Linton, re speed reduction, second concession road. Uh, as this is just correspondence, we don't need a mover and a seconder. But um, I'll open it up for, for any discussion in regards to this, um, I'll call it petition asking for a reduction in speed limit. Councillor Pretty John, your hand up. Oh yeah, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I would say that uh, it's not um, it's not too much to ask for to reduce the speed limit from 60 to 50 and hope they go 60. Um, that road is an extension of old red road and we're 50 all the way through. It doesn't mean that they're slowing down, but at least it'll give the police incentive to maybe stop them. I know a, a dog was hit the other day there. And I also know that there've been a couple of accidents at that same corner a few years, few years ago. I can't remember exactly when, but I don't have any objection to them lowering that speed limit. I think it's uh, very busy. Uh, the road, the driveways are close to the road. The hydro poles are still sticking out. And I, I don't see anything wrong with um, suggesting that we get that speed lowered. Thanks. Yeah. Anyone else? Mayor Burrell? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I assume that um, we probably are going to look forward to a, a staff report coming forward around this at, at some point. Um, so, so assuming that that's going to happen, um, I, I would like to see staff weigh in on the idea of turning that intersection into a four-way stop. My rationale is that you're, you're cresting a hill in both directions, certainly more so in one direction than another. 
And if you do have people that, that are uh, speeding, all of the signage that's involved in uh, warning that a stop sign is coming up and drawing people to a stop, it means that, that as you're cresting those difficult sight lines, the vehicles won't be going as fast as they are now. And, and I am aware of a number of incidents uh, that, that have happened there uh, over the years. And I know that stop signs are, are meant to control the flow of traffic. They're not meant to control speed. But I also see stop signs as an issue or as addressing safety issues. And I think, I think if we take a look into the stats of that intersection, I think we'll find there have been enough incidents that we could easily make a safety argument uh, to justify a four-way stop. So I'd like to have us fold that into the discussion when we actually visit this with a staff report. Thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Sir Renault. Just wanted to be clear, you're talking a four-way stop at concession two and Sharps Lane, right? Yes, yeah, Sharps Lane, Kelly Road, and, and which already have stop signs. So I'm talking yeah. about putting two more stop signs to interrupt the flow of traffic east and west on second concession at that intersection. Okay, and Councillor Prujan said something that confused me a bit, but this, con this second concession is uh, Parkdale? It's so it's yeah okay it's oh, I, okay I just wanted to make sure I was in the right place when she said old red road I got confused. Okay, Councillor Eady. I just want to agree with fellow councillors that intersection is very dangerous so I would like to see the a four way stop there too. Okay. Councillor Brayton, you want anything to chime in? No, I think a four way stop is a beautiful idea. Other than the red light, but other uh, four-way stopping. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'll just uh, mention something. Um, you know, when when council or, or this committee receives a petition to uh, change a speed limit, you know, it has an effect on the minimum maintenance standard for municipal highways, which is uh, your road maintenance. Uh, snow and ice removal, patrol frequency, and many other factors. Um, I agree with, uh, with Mayor Burrow. I had my comments here as well, adding the stop sign east and westbound on the second concession at the Kelly side road slash Sharps Lane. I'm not sure by putting the speed limit zone down to 50, uh, lowering it 10 kilometers, which is six miles an hour, was really going to make much of an impact. But I think stop signs, four-way stop, will make an impact for the speed on the second concession. And uh, our Director of Public Works um, has made a note uh, in regards to a report to, uh, to come back uh, for a discussion. So anyone else? Yeah, Mayor Burrow? One thing that, that may... Uh, may not come to mind right away when you're considering speed limits. And I, and I appreciate your comments about them being interlinked with the minimum maintenance standards. It's one of the reasons I'll, I'll look forward to a staff report. So we make sure that we're looking at everything associated with the decision. That's, that's good. But one of the things that I'm not sure comes to mind right away is the impact or the relationship with the stunt driving laws. And so now stunt driving is 40 kilometers an hour over the posted limit as far as 50. So by lowering our existing speed limit from 60 to 50. And combining that with the recent changes in legislation, now, as we get these, these hotheads that are driving around here uh, at speeds that are, that are up in that range, now the, the police have an incentive to be a little bit more active and start to, to nail people for stunt driving when they go by here at 90 kilometers an hour. And that wouldn't be the case if we left it at 60. And so that's just one more thing to consider as part of the, the broad decision-making process. That's just want to point that out. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Councillor Pretty John. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I agree with the four-way stop for all the, all the uh, discussion that we've had, but I also think that the speed limit will also be a deterrent. There's not a whole lot of difference except for maybe some winding more on the other end of Parkdale, which they wanted to call us, than there is there. I mean, they might have more of a stretch. However, they also have uh, a couple of humps and I don't see a big uh, problem 
having both done. So I look forward to having some kind of report. And, uh, you know, it's just an extension of uh, the speed limit. You know, you go through Broccoli, you go past Walmart, and there you're back on the same road. So I think that it would behoove us to look at both. We don't want to have talked about it and then not done anything. And then there's been a major accident. And you're right about the stunt driving. Mr. Mayor hadn't even thought about that. Um, it, it has become out of hand. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, that's the end of uh, the correspondence. Uh, any informational items in regards to public works? Seeing none. Uh, public question period. Were there any questions in regards to tonight's meeting? There were no questions. There's no questions this evening. I will now pass over the meeting to uh, Chair of the Recreation Committee of the Whole, Councillor Eady. Thank you so much, Councillor Smith. So Recreation Committee of the Whole, we're going to jump right into staff reports 14.1, report number Rec 2120 for the 2021-2022 Greenbush Rink Options. And I think they were looking for, we're just looking to receive that report right now. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Councillor Renault and Councillor Pretty John. And I'm guessing you guys are looking for some direction. So does anybody have any comments on that at all? To start us off, Mayor Burrow. Okay, so first of all, I appreciate the, the report and some of the, the details that came out that I wasn't aware of in, in terms of the difficulty of dealing with liner systems. Um, so that was a, a good education for me. Um, I guess I landed on, on a uh, being in favor of the cold patch idea and also uh, hiring somebody like, and I hate to use a specific name, but I can't think, it, well, I'll use the generic term, a a pavement sealing service, similar like, you know, to what you see people using with their driveways and, and whatnot, again, to help seal the, the surface and, and keep uh, the water up there. The reason that I'm going along those lines is I'm, I'm looking at what Brockville does with its outdoor rink at the Laurier Hill. And, and they basically just go right on top of grass. They push up snow banks and they manage to keep it going, you know, just by water logging the ground and getting it going from there. So anything that we can do uh, to to make better use of well water and not, not let it seep away uh, would be good. So those are just my thoughts was, you know, let's crawl, walk, run, um, show that, that yes, if we, if we improve the facility, then the use will improve. And let's show that there really is a demand for this. So let's go with the cold patch and maybe seal it and fix up uh, the boards a little bit and see where we go from there. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Renault? Would we still need to, or should we, if we're going to go with the option of the asphalt, need to make that, paint that white or something so that the black isn't absorbing the heat and melting the ice? Just a question. You want to, um, the director, the uh, recreation coordinator wants to chime in on that? Sure. We have looked at that option in the past, and apparently the, the paint is a lot of work and it doesn't stay. It chips off, it flakes off. They say that it's, it's kind of a big expense and a lot of work for the benefit you get out of it. Did you hear that, Councilor Renault? I think I got the gist of what she said. It's a lot of work. Well, it's the, it's the cost, it's the work, but it doesn't last. The product okay. doesn't last. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else? Councillor Smith? Uh, I agree with uh, Mayor Burrell with uh, the third option, ramping up the sides uh, with asphalt coal patch to hold the water in on the uh, on the. <laughs> anyone else? Yeah, I completely agree with Councillor Smith and Mayor Burrell. Uh, really honestly just to fill in the cracks and to repair a few parts in the boards because there are a few screws and stuff sticking out but we have a seem to have a quite a volunteer base that wants to get this rink going so i think it'll be very beneficial do you guys need a motion or anything like that 
or are you good? Do you need direction with an option? Just consens consensus is fine. Okay, so uh, just the consensus to go with uh, the third option is what staff's looking for. Okay, so are you guys all okay with the third option? Yep. I see heads are above him. Heads are above him. Good. So all those in favor of receiving that report? And that is carried. Okay, moving on to report rec 2121 for October recreation updates. Can I get a mover and a seconder to receive this report, please? I see Mayor Burrow and Councillor Smith. Does anybody have any comments or any staff want to add any comments before we start? Want to add? Yes, in Just give us one minute there. Fine. Okay. Uh, I, I do. Sure, Councillor Smith, go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, lo looking at the report, uh, I do have a, a question at Clifford E. Hall Park. Uh, it says the staff have requested a quote for installing lights at the RC track. Um, is this an initiative that staff took on themselves? Yes. Uh, what types of light are you looking at? We're looking at, I, I just wanted to get ideas because what's happening now is people are coming after work and it's getting dark so early so we just want to see the options out there so kind of a, a dawn to dusk or a time light that they you know turn a switch and it stays on for half an hour okay and is this for budgetary discussions for 2022 yeah. okay thank you just maybe another option you may want to look at is solar um just because of where the power is coming from might cost you more money to run the line all the way across to that track that's all Yep, thank you. Anyone else? All right, all those in favor of receiving this report? So that is carried. And then we're moving on to 14.3. Yeah. Yeah. You okay? <laughs> yep, go ahead. Okay, sorry. Budgeting for the master plan. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that? Anyone, anyone, Councillor Smith, Councillor Renault. Does staff want to add anything to this report? No. No. Okay, any comments at all from Mayor Burrow? Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, the, the reason that I didn't feel comfortable uh, moving this was that until the discussion is finished, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna vote in favor of this or, or not. Um, the one thing I don't want to see us do is spend money on a master plan if we're not prepared to put money behind it to actually implement the recommendations that might come out in it. So I think this, is, as strange as this may sound, I know that it, I know conventional wisdom is you have to do the, the plan and then implement the plan. So it seems like doing the master plan is, is the horse and then implementing it is the cart. But quite frankly, when I take a look at our last master recreation plan, and all the recommendations that were coming out of it and what we didn't do as a township since that first plan was done, unless we commit to putting money into our budget, then I don't see the point in, in having a plan. So I think as counterintuitive as it sounds, going out for plan right now is the cart. We haven't talked about the horse yet. So I think we need to have that discussion. You know, What is our appetite for budget around recreation in this township? And if it's not very much, then there's no sense having a plan because quite frankly, keeping up to what we have is going to be an achievement with no money. Thanks. Yeah, I completely agree with that. Councillor Renault? Yes, and I agree with the mayor as well, but why wouldn't we not just dust off the master plan we did and have staff look at that and see if there's any of those items that we should move forward is it relevant still or partially relevant rather than going out and having another study done that they're only going to copy that one anyway or pretty close to it that's what consultants do dust off somebody else's old plan but if there's stuff in there that we could maybe do now or not 
but, but we spent a lot of money on that one and we did squat absolute squat with it so i don't see us spending another fifty thousand dollars on another study that we're going to sit on we should just look at what we've got and see if there's anything in there that we want to move forward with what did i just Councillor Pretty John. You just muted yourself, Madam Chair. Yes, I'm I'm okay. She muted herself. Thank you, Mrs. Mrs. Chair. Madam Chair, Miss Chair, whatever. Um, I, I I agree with uh, Mayor Mayor Burrow and, and uh, Councillor Edie, as well as Councillor Renault. I think that we did the master plan. And there's a lot of things people want in recreation when they're not putting the money to it and they don't realize how much money they're going to have to put to it. So it's great to build this great big pie in the sky plan. And I, I think I understand the cart before the horse, but we should look at what we have now and how much it's going to cost to maintain it on a high level, not to just scrape by, like to maintain our ballparks, to keep our bleachers going, to like, I think we have to maintain before we look to expand. So dusting off that plan is not a bad idea. It's a, it, just see where we are with that plan to what we have now. And, and then we can look at what we want to do, maybe one thing at a time, but also involve, involve the taxpayers because we may think what we know they wanna do when really they just want to turn on the TV at night and do something different. So involve the community. I mean, us deciding what the community wants to do, I might never think of, it's, and they're all different age groups. So I think we should just st start with the plan we have, maintain what we have, and actually see how much it's gonna cost to maintain what we have. Because, you know, like the bills were gonna be high this year if we bring back everything up to standard. So that's just my thought, thank you. Councillor Smith. To our director and then myself, director. So just a couple com uh, comments I want I want to make. Um, the, the existing uh, report was done in 2009, which is essentially 12 to 13 years ago. I got to say a lot can change in, in 12 years. Um, and what is likely ha has changed in that time is what our residents um, actually want. Uh, the other point I want to make is, and I've said this before, the quality of a report from an engineer is in, in a large part uh, dependent on the quality of the request for proposal that we put out there. So we can customize what we are looking for prior to, ish, prior to going out for an RFP to get this, this uh, 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 report done. Um, that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Um, well, for, first of all, I'd like to say that a master plan is twofold. A master plan is going to give you the high level, what people would like to see or have is recreation. The last survey, and I believe, as, as the director stated, 2009, I believe there's only 27 residents um, submitted comments to, to make decisions on just 27 residents um, on thousands of dollars is uh, very difficult. And so that's what I mean by it's twofold. You receive the information doesn't mean you have to do it, but it gives you an idea of what the people are looking for. It gives the staff the opportunity to cost things out. And then it comes back to the council of the day who governs the municipalities 
finances. So, like I said, it, it's just not, well, okay, here's a recreation master plan, and this is what a number of people have stated. So, I think we better go out and spend the money on X, Y, and Z. Uh, that's what I mean about it's too full. I think we, you look at the bigger picture and look at everything, you got to make decisions on that. And I, I'm a very supportive person when it comes to volunteer base. You have to understand you're not a large municipality with a large amount of funds. So volunteers and organizations always chip into our recreational uh, services, as I'll say, for the municipality. And thanks to them is part of the reason we have what we have today with councils, previous presidents, in the past, supporting what we have. And as Councillor Purdy John said, and I loved your comment, we need to maintain what we have presently. So that's what I mean. It's, it's a big picture. It's a plan. It's not something that says you have to do everything. So I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. Okay. Mayor Burrow, and then I believe uh, Councillor Renault had her hand up. Okay, thank you, Madam Chair. Just a, a couple of quick comments. Um, so, for instance, before we go and, and spend money on a, on a master plan, I know there's one outstanding uh, project. Uh, we had talked about doing something for Heather Heights. That park has never really been developed to its potential. We know that, that people have wanted uh, something there for some time. Uh, I don't think that we even managed to get dirt delivered there and, and leveled off yet. We were concerned about the exposure of the stone. Um, so, I, I don't we, we as, a, as a committee or a council must not have done all of the right things because I know that, that staff always responds well when they're directed to do something, they understand that and it gets done. So the fact that that still sits there and we're talking about going out for a master plan just doesn't seem right. Even, even the cheaper option for the master plan, if we only spent what Augusta spent on, on theirs, twelve or $16,000, imagine what we could do at Heather Heights for that same twelve or $16,000. Um, now, I'd like to, to turn my comment a little bit more positive and circle back to the Algonquin College uh, option. I didn't really see any costs associated with that. I, I know that there would be, um, but especially option B under there, forming a, a partnership. Um, I, I'm fortunate at being mayor that I've been exposed to a lot of uh, partnership type arrangements, and I see the good that comes out of them. So that one really jumped off the page at me is maybe we can pursue forming a partnership with Algonquin College and its brand uh, to, to be managed by Mr. Lee. And so I'd, I'd like a little bit more information about, do we even have a sense of what those costs would be? What might that look like? Or maybe this is you know something the committee has to decide if it's interested. Maybe we go to that next step to have Mr. Lee come and, and be a, a delegate and answer some of our questions. Or I just, I would like to see us talk about that one a little bit more. Thanks. Do you want to chime in? The only thing I was going to say was that the uh, the concept of utilizing the college it would almost have to be on by the hour. Um, I mean, we could get a high level idea on how many hours they they think it'll take, but we are dealing with students here, so it's a little bit different. Um, that's all I've got. So if I could follow up, Madam Chair. Um, so one of the things I would be interested in knowing is even, even if they uh, thought that it would be viable to make it um, a, a semester project uh, for, for some of the students or, or something along those lines, so that we could scope the work, uh, we would know what we were getting into, they would know what they were getting into. And even if it ended up being the same twelve or $16,000 and we got something that's like a master plan at the end of it, but we can also justify more to the taxpayers that we're helping to support ongoing education, right? And that some of those people may end up landing a job in the recreation uh, sector in our region. So there's, there's a little bit of an economic development twist to it. There's an ongoing education twist to it. There's a direct benefit to, to us for the information and the deliverables that we would get out of it. Um, I just, I don't want to see this one die on the vine just yet. I, I appreciate your comments about, you know, by the hour and, and this does involve students, but um, I think this is something we, we could pursue if we give it enough thought. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Renaud, did you have something you wanted to add? 
Yeah, a question. Um, and I'm not sure who said it. Maybe it was Councillor Smith about <clears throat> doing, uh, ha having the public give us information like they did in the previous one. Is that not something that we could send out the surveys to the public and have Jennifer then go through those surveys to see what's in them? How does that compare to the master plan that was done in 20, whatever, 09 or whatever, and, and see what the differences are. But see first, which would be low cost, to do our own survey and see what's there before we go out to try and pick. I do like the college idea, but it would give us the starting point at really little or no cost. We send out the survey, we see, I mean, 27 people, I would like to see a lot more, but can we generate the interest to get our residents interested in our recreation? If they are not interested, why are we bothering? You have no comment or no? No comment? Okay. Uh, Councillor no. John and then Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr. Okay, I'm working with a small phone, Madam Chair, <laughs> big fingers. Um, thank you. Uh, I know of a, a program that was done at St. Lawrence College, and I believe it was done through employment insurance. And if you were on employment insurance, you could apply to this program, and it was like a construction course. And it was so many weeks, it gave you opportunity to look at tools, to work with tools. They were working on building a garage or something. They were, these students were paid by employment insurance. They're covered under the college for liability, et cetera. Now on a larger scale with Algonquin College, maybe they need a final project for the year. And maybe that's something that could be incorporated in it. Like if, if we agreed with what they were looking at doing, as, as a council, like for Heather Heights, for instance, let's say that they took that on as a project. They could do that with all their different ideas. And we supply the, the dirt and the lumber, I guess, and they supply the manpower and they learn because the teacher is going to have them do it right. Everything will be done by code. We just have to kind of approve or give them some rain on what what we would like. And that's really involving your community, I think. I, I, they did a I know my son took the construction and it was like, for him, it was a just, a, I'm gonna do that because he worked construction with his brother and he thought, okay, this is a stop gap. And, he, and it, was good, it was good for the other students to learn how to use these tools and stuff. So if it was on a higher level with Algonquin College, maybe that would work, you know, planning and construction. And we need more trades, we need more hands-on. And I know they do trades up up Algonquin Way. So just a thought. Thank you. Councillor Smith. Thank you. Uh, just coming back to the uh, master plan. Uh, as uh, Mayor Burrell stated, uh, he, uh, he doesn't want to uh, put the brakes on this and he does like the idea of partnership with the college. As a graduate of recreation leadership, I will say that uh, that is that was one of our projects at uh, Sir Sanford Fleming College in Peterborough when I was there. We did the project for the city of Peterborough Recreation Master Plan, and uh, I think this is a great opportunity um, to partner with the college. Uh, it was no cost for us back in back in my day. I'm an old I'm an old fellow today, but uh, there was no cost back then, so I'm not sure what the cost would be today, but. Uh, it did state in here on in uh, the paragraph A, compensated through their consulting company. Uh, so there may not be a cost to us. Someone else may be covering their costs. I don't know, but I do um, I do like the idea of partnering with the uh, Algonquin College. So thank you. Is there anyone else? So general oh, consensus. The director, I think director, the director had his hand up. Sorry. Here, go ahead. Yeah, so I would just like to uh, to propose. I mean, if if part if partnering with the college is a fa favorable option here, the, the, just so we can kind of keep things rolling, how about we uh, reach out to uh, Mr. Lee and see if he is, would be willing to put together a little bit of a presentation and come to council and, and talk about 
the big picture of it. Yeah, I think it's a great idea. Everyone hear what he had, the director had to say? Yeah, yeah. I think that was kind of a general consensus. So yeah. I think we'll go with that then. I see a lot of bob and heads again. So all those in favor of receiving the report. And that is carried. All right, financials to date, 15.1. Can I get a mover and a seconder to receive those? Not all at once, guys. <laughs> Mayor Burrow and Councillor Smith. Is there any questions, comments, concerns? Not seen any. So all those in favor of receiving those? And that is carried. I don't see any questions or anything like that. So I'm guessing there weren't any. So can I get... Okay, perfect, thank you. Can I get a mover for adjournment, please? Uh, Councillor Pretty John, all those in favor? And that's